Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. In the last video, I re-geared the Chrysler 8 and a quarter 29 spline from 410 to 488, and it made a massive difference in the performance of the vehicle. In power, in fuel economy, in kind of everything you'd expect, shifting of the gears, everything's just kind of back to the way the Jeep felt when it was on 29s, and I had no mods on it at all, basically. It just feels like a standard vehicle again. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing the Dana 30 high pinion. I'm taking this apart more than I should be because a friend in the US has sent me some chromoly shafts and uh, it's actually my birthday today. <sighs> all right, I know, thanks very much. Um, you don't have to wish me a happy birthday. Um, but I've got the day off and this is what I'm doing and, and the axle shafts arrived today. He doesn't know that, obviously. But his name's Forrest Strong, and that's probably one of the coolest names I've ever heard. Not as cool as Michael McCorton, but close. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic. He's a lot cooler than my name. But, yeah, thanks, Forrest. If you're watching, mate, then I really appreciate it, and I, and I can't wait to get those in because it's going to be a big upgrade for me on this little Dana 30 high pinion. But anyway, carrier's going to come out, pinion's going to come out, and then it's back to getting it all together with setup bearings, seeing what the pattern is, and trying to work out this puzzle. Ooh, almost, almost. There we go. I haven't done much talking so far in this video. I've kind of just been getting on with it. I mean, like much of what re-gearing is, the, the, the most part in the beginning is just getting everything taken apart and squared away. Um, but much like the last video, I'm using Elite gear and uh, they're pretty good, good value for money, actually. I get master rebuild kit and everything with it. So I've got all the shims, all the seals. And I happen to have setup bearings too for the carrier and the pinion made up from the last time I re-geared this to 410. And the old gears are looking good. I know there's a guy out there who's interested in the old gears. I mean, they don't look any different to, um, you know, to, to how I installed them really. There's no chips and, I mean, obviously they've got a bit of wear on them, but yeah, I mean, you know, you don't have to buy them off me. Just pay the shipping, you can have them. Um, 
but uh, yeah, hopefully they'll go to a good home. But obviously I'm putting on the 488. So when you change up numerically uh, with gears, but obviously you're gearing down the vehicle, you'll see that the pinion shrinks tremendously. So this is 410, this is 488, much smaller pinion. So you, you can run into issues where the pinion can become weaker, um, but hopefully it's really just down to driving style, I think, a lot of the time with these things. The Dana 30 is often described as like a, a crappy axle, but it's not actually a bad axle at all. It's reverse cut, so it's generally pretty tough. And uh, yeah, it's very small, but you, you, it's about using the, the axle, I think, for what it's intended for. If you're going to put 37s on it, um, you know, and smash it around rock bouncing, you know, it probably will blow up with, without some reinforcement. But obviously the weakness to a small axle, regardless of all the hardware you throw on it, is always going to come back to the ring and pinion. You know, and generally people who are upgrading to massive tyres and doing tough work will, will gear up the, the ring and pinion size as, as the differential housing changes. So, you know, the Chrysler 8 and a quarter has got a much bigger ring and pinion than the Dana 30 high pinion, much bigger. I mean, I'm sure you could quite happily chuck a 37 on that rear end with chrome molly shafts and you'll be fine, on depending on your driving style. But, you know, on this front one, you, you, you kind of just want to be a bit more careful. But I'm just going to get all this mounted up. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward, really. Jesus, uh, I've been here since the Big Bang. Flipping heck. So it's been a fairly long morning of just preparation, really. Most of this has just been preparation. And I've also spent some time on the lathe just spinning one of the races on my setup bearing to make a setup race so I can get that in and out easily because with the Dana 30 high pinion, the shims for pinion depth go behind the inner race from what I've had a look at online and, and really all you have between the actual pinion um, and the bearing is, is like a big oil slinger which obviously makes up part of the shim stack of course but um, you don't necessarily need to put anything else between there you can press the bearing on and then make the rest up at the back of the race so having a set up race I think is pretty important because you kind of end up destroying one of the oil slingers by just taking that race out, it's, it's almost impossible to get it out really without trashing that and I've only got one of them now. So I'm probably going to be putting these original shims back in, I mean obviously this is trashed so um, I have to measure this, I think it's 55 thousandths. You've got another intermediate oil slinger that sits at the back of the inner race and then we've got a back oil slinger that sits behind the back bearing there in between the oil seal and the bearing and this is my pinion uh, um, what do you call it, like instead of a crush sleeve, this is my bearing preload and that's the stack I made up last time and we have the uh, the non ring gear side um, shims and the ring gear side shims that make up the backlash so I need to get all this measured and figure out what I'm going to do going forward. I've got set up bearings right here actually, um, this is the race I've just made so I've just spun that on the lathe and ground the outer out so it goes in and out easily got a setup in a pinion there we don't actually need that in this case um, and there's a there's a reason why um, we just need the race I've got the side carrier bearings which is definitely something you want to need for the Dana 30 because of the shimming that goes in between this and the carrier so you know taking these off every time it's just you know unless you've got really good tilt tools for doing that um, you know having setup bearings really helps and we have an outer setup bearing as, as well on the tail end of the pinion. We don't really need that either. Um, this goes on just by lightly pushing it on 
Um, you know, there's no movement there, and it is kind of a squeeze fit, but it, but it's not like you have to hammer it out every time. So that's what I got with the set here, and I'm kind of familiar with that bearing being like that from the last time I set this up. So I've tapped that race in to the housing because no shims go behind it, and it doesn't need to go anywhere. But what I'm going to do is use the real bearing and get that pressed on with the oil slinger that came with the kit like this. And then we're just going to use this outer race here for that bearing there, which should give us some decent results and get us a bit closer to that pinion depth I'm looking for, because the problem with this bearing here is it's heavily used and you can actually see there's quite a lot of slop in it. You know, this bearing's a bit, a bit nicer actually. It is sitting slightly different and I think it's going to give us a more accurate figure. Oh, so now it's on to the fun part. And by fun part, I mean shit part, because it means maths, and I'm not good at maths. But hopefully this should be pretty simple. I've measured the old setup, so I've done a sweet diagram. There's a big oil slinger. There's that thing in the middle, which is the pinion shim. Kind of they all contribute to that in a way. And there's the oil slinger at the back. Old, so we've got 54 thousandths. And we've got 13 thousandths, and that's the, the one that lives behind the inner race. And then we've got the oil slinger at the back, which is 23 thousandths. Um, we could potentially reuse that because it's looking pretty good. Uh, and on the new setup, the biggest difference is the oil slinger they, they gave me. That's 25 thousandths. Um, the thing in the middle, the, the, the thing that goes behind the... The inner race is 14 thousandths and the slinger at the back is identical, 23 thousandths. So I'm guessing they're actually standard. I'm even guessing that this is these two are the same, but it's off by one thousandths because of the the, the tool I'm using to, to measure it is, is a little bit, you know, a little bit Jimmy Savile-ish. But basically the only thing I'm going to do is add 30 thousandths to my, in fact, I'm going to, I want to add less than that actually. I want to add about 28 thousandths to the back of the inner race, basically, to try and bring it somewhere near the old setup. So that's what I'm going to do, but they don't give us shims. Don't know why, they haven't given me any shims to do this. They obviously give me these, which I can use. That's going to go on there like that, but I need something to go behind there, basically. I need, I need a shim that with that kind of, I mean, that's not going to work. That, that That's for the um, side carrier bearing. So, you know, that they haven't actually given me anything like that. Oh, why do they have to make this stuff just in the most undoable bags on the face of the earth? Oh, there we go. So I dragged their name through the mud. Sorry, Elite Gear. There are the shims. They're underneath the, uh, whatever you would call it. So. That's great, I can measure these out and I can kind of see what I've got here. I better write down what I've got. Usually a good thing to do is get a marker pen and actually write on them, but I don't have a good enough marker pen to do that. So I will write them down and place them in order. This is a 18 thousandths and this is a 10 thousandths, so I'm obviously adding 28. So that's too much, 28 thousandths. I'm really stupid. I need to get my calculator. And maybe I'm not stupid. It means it, ma it makes 53 thousandths. So um, our new shim stack will be 53 thousandths on new pinion depth. I think, I think I'm right. But I could be completely wrong because that oil slinger is really thick on the old setup. And that is basically a shim. That is part of the the pinion depth surely so you know that's 54 55 54 55 thousandths is a bit beaten up so I'm having trouble getting a good reading um so you know putting this these two in plus that plus that 50, we're add, we're adding an extra 28 thousandths we should really add that onto the 14 thousandths as well fuck this is all just Making my head hurt again. My brain hurts, Granddad. Yeah, but it says here, Dana 30, naught point pinion shim depth, naught point or 65 thousandths. So that is quite a bit, isn't it? Let's work this all out again using the calculator. So it said 60, 
four thousandths or sixty-five thousandths. So if I get the calculator right, so that's fifty-three plus fourteen equals sixty-seven thousandths. So I think we'll be in too deep, but we can try it. So I've pressed the bearing on and the sling is there. Um, and I've put the race in as well, the setup race with the three shims behind it. So this is gonna go in like a soweth. And, and it didn't work. So let's go have a look why. Probably because the race has come out. No, it's all all right. There we are. And then the preload goes on, like so. I'll go up with a little bit of gear ore. I'm just going to put it on this bearing here, because obviously these bearings are the real deal bearings that we're using this time. These only really using one setup race because that pushes on very easily and pushes off very easily. I don't mind tapping that one off. Um, and we're gonna put this slinger on, like that. And then the yoke's gonna go on. On you go, you bastard. Like so. And then the washer, and then a nut. This is the old nut, but I've just ground down the end of it as per advised because you know it can kind of cause a lot of problems basically if you're going to destroy the threads on on the setup there but we kind of need the washer that is definitely not threading on so good so that preload feels really good obviously i subtracted three thousandths from the, the pinion preload stack because I sub, because I added shims to the pinion stack. I believe that's the way it works. But I mean, it feels good, so let's try it. It's a little bit of a nerve-wracking job, really. It's a nerve-wracking job. Uh, because, you know, it just... A lot a lot can go wrong, <laughs> you know? A lot can go wrong, and, it, and it's you've got one shot at it, really. If you put it together, crap and you start driving it round all the time and it's you've probably already screwed the teeth on the gears you know there'll be there'll be dust there'll be metal dust in there maybe you can salvage it but the reality is 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 you've probably goofed it to be fair and uh you know and that and that's it you've got to be right you know these things are built to mesh together you know to the thousandths of an inch so <laughs> they they need to be right but anyway it's in there um, I'm just going to check the backlash. So this elite gear set is between six and ten thousandths. So we're we're just just below seven, um, and and that's nice. That's nice. But the thing to do really is to rotate the gear set around a few times. And uh, I'm going to use the Ryobi actually and do it that way. But it's good to do that. Everything finds its place. So, yeah, we're ju just just below. We're just on eight thousandths now. About about eight thousandths. Just just above eight thousandths. That's not too bad. You might be worth running a gear pattern basically and just seeing what seeing what the damage is. Try not to put too much of stuff on like I did last time. And that was some false readings. Get some pretty hard lines. I can't imagine this gear pattern's going to be going to be any good. I'll be very very surprised. I think the adjustments I've made are you know, it's like a 
well, it's like a thousandth difference, isn't it, than it was before. You'd be lucky, like I was with the back axle, to um, to get that. Okay. So I said that the pinion depth wasn't didn't look too bad. I mean, it actually doesn't look too bad, but but it isn't something you'd want to run with. In in this case. The pinion it is too far in to the differential, so we have too too much, too many shims really pushing it forward. Um, we need to decrease the pinion shim and, and bring it back a bit because we've got loads of root contact in, in in the tooth there. You can see that there on both sides, the drive and the coast side. And in this case, this is the drive side um, at the top, unlike the rear and un underneath is is the coast side. So. Um, I think the backlash is probably okay, but you know it doesn't really matter because pinion depth is wrong. So take it apart. We shall decrease the pinion depth by, I reckon, ten thousandths. We'll do a big adjustment, and then we'll have a look at it and and see how it goes. So what we're going to do is take away one of the pinion depth shims. That's twelve thousandths. I think if we take that one out and set it aside and then just see what it is there. I think that's a pretty big adjustment and that'll decrease the depth by quite a bit. So there's a new gear pattern with 10 thousandths out of the shim stack, which is obviously a massive adjustment, but it's good to do because now you can see that the pinion um, is too shallow. So it's back too far now because we're, we're clipping the top of the tooth. You know, this used to be the other way before. It was almost like a mirror image, but, but the opposite and that now now we're sort of the other way around, clipping the top of the tooth, and this is the drive side. So I mean the coast side you can see just up there, it's ba basically the same. So what I'm going to do now is move it back in, um, and I'm probably going to add five thousandths to the stack, so half of what I've taken away is going to be put back in. So that's really good preload. And the great thing about the shims is it won't let you tighten it up any more than, than, than physically possible. There we go. And that's ten thousandths exactly. I've rotated the ring gear too. Coast side. Drive side. This is the coast side, you know, really nice. Drive side as well. More important, central and it's pretty decent. We could, we could tighten up the backlash just a little bit more, really. Ring around the rosy. Let's try that old backy lashy again. Dang it. Stupid. Oh, jeez. There we go. Oh, it's tighter than a monkey's ass piece. So we've added three thou here, taken three thou away there. And we can see Rom bang on six thou. So that's the final pattern with the pinion all buttoned up. I'm pretty happy with that. That's not too bad at all. The drive side, you know, the side I, I pay more attention to, but I'm going to run with this. I'm going to get it apart. I'm basically going to, um, yeah, get it all apart and then and then fall asleep just here. Because, uh, oh man, I'm really tired. I don't know what's wrong with me at the moment. I need, probably need to get, go eat something instead of eating the, uh, the gear paste.
This is the um, the recommended way of removing it. <laughs> Let's get you cleaned up and then get the final. It's a bit on the tighter side. We are there already. Put some fresh paste on. Oh wow, that goes on a little bit better than the old stuff that I've got. I always put it on a bit thick though, which is a really bad thing to do. Man, I'm really tired. I need to have an afternoon nap or something. I'm absolutely hanging. Need to eat some food. But basically, that's my final pattern. Uh, really happy with that. And, and you know, I haven't shown it in the video, but I've had this apart maybe 20 times. You know, just adjusting shims. And, and I even assembled it completely, thinking I was happy. And then I ran it and I looked at the pattern and I thought, no, nah, no, nah, that is not good enough. And had to tear it all apart. Fortunately, I did it very carefully. I didn't, didn't damage any of the seals. You know, did it really, you know, you can do that. Obviously, you don't want to do it obviously too many times, but you can kind of get away with it a couple of times if you have to. But put it back to, I adjusted the shim stack on the pinion depth, um, increased it by uh, maybe one thang. And then I got to this pattern here, which I really liked. And, you know, one thousand, it's basically a Rizzler made all the difference and that is kind of it with 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 gears it's that's why i don't like it you know and it's incredible isn't it that just one thou makes all the difference but um that's a that's a decent pattern now i think i've got that pinion depth on point i think i'm going to end the video there thanks for watching guys i appreciate it and i'll see you in another video take care